Well, hey there, kids. It's your good buddy, Uncle Ben, and welcome to a brand new installment of Meet the Machines, the gear series for people who like things that are nice. I like things that are nice. And today I have myself something very nice indeed. This is a brand new Sir Modern Terra. It's part of this limited edition series they did this year, celebrating some beautiful earth tones like this gorgeous flat olive green. I just got this guitar last week and I have been too busy to really do hardly anything, much less play it and set it up. So I thought I would invite you guys along for the ritual of how I typically go through setting up a brand new guitar to my liking. In this video, we're gonna talk about stuff like the nut height, changing the string gauge and tremolo angle and all that kind of jazz, adjusting the action, the truss rod, the pickups, just kind of the general staple of things that I go through whenever I get myself a new Gortar. Yeah, from the factory, this guitar came with what I think of as like a good blank slate kind of setup. Very agreeable for most players, but you can tweak it to your taste if you want. The neck has a little bit more relief, a little bit more back bow to it than what I usually keep. I like a good straight neck. The nut is nice and low. That's one thing about Sir guitars you can always count on. John loves having a nice low nut set up on his guitars. The action is a little bit higher than what I like, so I've got a couple things I'm gonna have to adjust here. But in my opinion, that's all part of the bonding process when you get a new guitar, so I'm okay with it. As a reminder, if you like this video and wanna help support my channel and get access to all kinds of downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more, consider supporting my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Or even for just $1 a month, or more, if you feel so generous, you can get access to all kinds of goodies. So don't delay, sign up today. Patreon.com slash Ben Ellery Guitars. So the first thing I do with the new guitar is to string it up with my preferred string gauge. And considering this guitar is going to be in standard, I'm going to use my usual 9342. Now, the reason I do that first is because it would really be a waste of time to do something like, let's say, get the neck set up to the straightness that I want with these heavier strings on there then change to the lighter gauge of strings and then the neck is going to push forward because it's not counteracting as much tension as it was before, right? So go ahead and put on the string gauges that you want and then we'll start adjusting things from there. So considering this guitar has 10 through 46 strings on it and I'm going to 9 through 42, there's gonna be a decrease in string tension. This is gonna affect a few things. For one, the uh, springs right here in the back in the tremolo cavity are now you know, counterbalancing for this much tension from the 10 set. Whenever I go to the 9 set, the springs are gonna be counteracting too much tension. So what we're gonna see is the tremolo fall back into the cavity like this because the springs are working too hard. Similarly, the truss rod in the neck here is currently counterbalanced against this heavier string set. And like I said, it's got a little bit more bow in it. Than, than what I usually prefer, a little bit more back bow. Probably whenever I change over to the lighter string gauge, the neck will straighten itself out a little bit. You know, it'll go from being slightly like this to slightly more like that, a little bit straighter. And it'll probably end up exactly where I want it, but there's only one way to find out. The easy access to the tremolo block and the locking tuners make changing strings really fast, so this won't take too long. All we've got to do here is to detune the string. There's the lock that I undo, and now we can put on our new string. And then one of the most important things that I do for any guitar of any price range is I use a little bit of this stuff right here, the hilariously titled Big Ben's Nut Sauce. Yes, that's right, Big Ben's Nut Sauce. This stuff is a lifesaver. It's basically like a super slick lubricant that you put in the nut slot, and it just really frees up the string to keep it from getting caught up in there and um, bunching up and causing tuning problems and stuff. Now, the nuts on Sir guitars are cut immaculately. You could definitely get away with not using this stuff, but it's not gonna hurt anything to apply a little bit of this. So there you go, one down, five to go. Now we give this thing a haircut and call it a day. All in all, a pretty painless procedure, unless I drop these on the floor and step on them later, which I have done a million times. That's why I time in a knot like this, that way they don't run away from you. Okay, so we got ourselves six shiny new strings on here. Very bright and resonant, something I find with all Sir guitars, they all just ring like bells. 
Now, as I predicted there, due to going from a heavier gauge of strings to a lighter gauge of strings, you might be able to see there the tremolo has dipped back a little bit. Now, this tremolo isn't like back recessed like a Floyd, so you can never really pull these up more than like a step or so, but as it is right now, you can't pull it up at all because the bridge is parked against the body of the guitar. So, what I'm going to do is to give the neck a little bit of time to adjust here. Some necks respond extremely quickly to tension changes. Some of them take a couple hours or even overnight. Just depends on the neck. This is part of the getting to know you phase, you know? So what I'm gonna do while I wait for that neck to adjust is uh, go get a workout in and try to get shredded before I start shredding, in other words. And uh, that should probably give me enough time to where I can tell if this neck has adjusted or not. I've got some lessons and stuff today too, so it might be later before I come back to this. Okay, so several hours, several hundred calories burned, several guitar lessons, and several meals later. Here we are, and predictably, the neck has moved a little bit after settling into the new string gauge. And uh, again, I've got this tremolo that's kind of backed down into the cavity a little bit. So, let's get to solving these problems. <laughs> So what I usually look for whenever I'm checking the neck relief and stuff is the amount of buzz that it has, particularly around frets like 5 to 9-ish, something like that. And you can hear this is getting a little rattly because the neck is damn near dead straight now. I use the string itself as like a straight edge to check this. This is always one of those things you can do if you don't have any like fancy tools or anything like that around. Um, you'll notice there I'm fretting the first fret of the low E here with my left hand. I'm actually using my elbow and just mashing the low E string on any of the body frets. So in this case, this is gonna be anything from like 19 up. So I'll just mash with my elbow like that right there. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm using the low E string as a straight edge to check the straightness of the neck. Now with your elbow holding the string against the body there, you can use your right hand here and kind of tap the string against like around the eighth fret or so. That's around the middle point of the neck. And what you're gonna see there is the top of the fret and the string. If the neck has a lot of relief in it, if it's back bowed like this right here, you're gonna see a gap. This is the fret, this is the string. If the neck is too straight, the string is gonna be touching the fret. And if it's in the sweet spot, you're gonna be able to kind of tap the string and have it touch the fret and come off it like this. You can even hear the noise a little bit. There's the sound of it tapping the top of the fret like that. And this is kind of one of those feel things. You could use feeler gauges and stuff like that and exactly plan out you know, how much neck relief you like. But honestly, over the years of doing this, I've kind of gotten to where I can just sort of feel it. And I know that's kind of an unsatisfactory answer, but I can just tell that this neck is a little too straight for my preference. Now, I'm not one of those players that thinks that an electric guitar with tiny ass strings on it should be totally clean sounding. All of my guitars have a little bit of buzz. I think that just kind of makes it sound like an electric guitar, you know? Most of the recordings you've ever heard in your life have a little bit of zing to them if they're being hit hard. That's just the nature of the instrument, unless you have action like a mile away, which I don't. Um, and I can tell when I dig in hard. That's just a little more buzz than what I'm comfy with. So what I'm gonna do first here is to adjust the truss rod. Now this is one of those things that I know terrifies every guitar player in the world to think about messing with the truss rod. I have this theory that like big guitar tech put out this um, you know conspiracy out there that if you touch the truss rod, you'll ruin your guitar. That way you have to keep taking your guitar to techs and paying them money and stuff. In reality, this is not as scary as you think it is as long as you take your time and very importantly, use the right tool. Find the exact right Allen wrench or whatever tool it is that fits the guitar you're adjusting. Do not use the wrong wrench. I have made this mistake and used something that felt close enough and then a year or two later, you notice that it's not close enough anymore because you've kind of reamed out the tooling inside of that truss rod and you don't want to do that. That's a huge repair you're gonna to have to pay for there. So use the right tool and make small adjustments and you're gonna be just fine. Generally speaking, if you just want to be ultra cautious, and again, I'm not responsible for anybody messing up their guitar, it's clear in the air there. But if you want to be really easy on the neck, 
don't turn it more than like, let's say an eighth of a turn at a time. So if you think about it like a clock face with quarters being like that, don't move it more than an eighth of a turn at a time. And then wait a while. Just like I said earlier, every neck adjusts at kind of a different rate. Some necks respond immediately. You turn that truss rod and you see an action right away. Some take a little bit of time. Again, this is the getting to know you process. So don't really, you know, make an adjustment. You don't notice anything. You keep making a more of an adjustment. This is going to be like that time that you took those special brownies and the person didn't do anything. So you ate another one. And then you were like on Mars riding on the back of a dragon or something like that. And it lasted for like 12 hours. Not that I'm speaking from experience and not that it was during a family holiday. Don't do that. Little turn, wait a couple hours, come back and check it. So I've got the correct Allen wrench here to adjust the truss rod on this. And you can follow the good old, you know, advice of righty tidy at lefty loosey. If we go to the left, we're going to be loosening the truss rod, which is going to let the neck back bow a little bit. If we go to the right, we're going to be tightening it, which is going to straighten the neck. The neck is already too straight, so I'm going to go to the left. You ever notice how that logic doesn't apply to guitar tuners, though? It's actually lefty, tidy, righty, loosey. What the hell is up with that? Anyway, it doesn't need much of an adjustment, so I'm just going to turn it maybe, maybe an eighth of a turn, something like that. So I've inserted that down there, and I'm just going to give this just a little tweak. I just want a little teeny tiny bit of relief so that the string can kind of vibrate freely and not create a whole ton of buzz. The areas of action adjustment is something I feel like I should mention in this video because a lot of times I see people turn in the wrong screws to adjust the wrong thing. If your action is too low here, adjusting the neck is not going to fix it. Generally speaking, and again, there are exceptions to this, frets zero through two are mainly your nut height. Frets three to about nine or 10 on most guitars. That's mainly where you're gonna be feeling the effects of that back bow or front bow from the truss rod adjustment. And then everything past that, that's where the bridge adjustment really matters, okay? So again, you gotta think about those areas of adjustment. Nut, neck, bridge, okay? Adjust the right thing for the right problem. So since I've adjusted the truss rod a little bit right here, while this is still kind of settling into place uh, before I check it again, I'm just gonna go ahead and start adjusting this tremolo angle a little bit because right now, it's all the way back against the body. I kind of find that whenever the bridge is parked against the body like that, it overall makes things feel a little bit stiffer. I think if you have that nice parallel with the body float going on, everything just generally feels a little bit looser and nicer to the touch. But as with all these things, your mileage may vary. Oh. So as it is right now, the bridge is parked back because the springs are working too hard. These were working for 10 gauge strings, they need to work a little less harder for nine gauge strings. So what I'm gonna do is to adjust these two screws here in the back, the claw screws. I'm gonna loosen those just a little bit. A little dab will do you with this stuff. It doesn't take much adjustment. Now, as I loosen those, the bridge is going to come forward, which is essentially gonna put the strings into dive bomb, which means that they're gonna go flat. So what you've got to do, and it's kind of time consuming, but it's all part of the process, loosen those the same distance each. So like, I'll start with like a half of a turn on both sides. I'll retune everything, see how the bridge is floating. Maybe do another half turn, retune, see how the bridge is floating, etc. Now, if I was a smart person, I would just follow my own advice and go through that same process I did in that, uh, this is why you suck at guitar, you don't know how to change tunings and string gauges on a Floyd Rose video that I did like years ago that hopefully all you guys have seen. But um, I'm just not doing that. So there. And again, use the right tool for the job right here. Don't use a screwdriver that only barely fits because you're going to strip the screws out. Now I'm just going to turn this one half turn and then I'm going to turn this guy one half turn. I'm kind of marking that by putting my first finger on the underside of the screwdriver then working it over the top like that. You want this plate to be parallel with the cavity, right? So if you look at your tremolo um, claw here and it's like diagonal, you've done it wrong. Try to get that sitting straight on both sides. Now I've got to retune the guitar. And I think that about did it right there. Hopefully you can see now the bridge is sitting flush. I can move the bar back a little bit, even do some fluttering and stuff like that. If you want to make those, those old beaver calls and stuff like that, like the kids love to do these days. 
So now I've got the tremolo adjusted just where I like it. So that took just a couple of minutes. So let's see if Mr. Neck here has adjusted in the meantime. It looks like it's moved a little bit about where I want it to be. Now again, I'm fretting here, I'm fretting with my elbow and I'm tapping around that eighth fret. The string is moving a little bit more than it did before. Before when I checked it, the string like barely moved. It looked like that. Now it looks more like this. There's a little bit more movement to it. And again, the sound has changed. It's kind of hard to tell this, I'm sure on the camera mic and stuff. But can you hear there's a note behind that? Mm -hmm. ha, 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 ha. I feel like Jacob Collier. There's a little bit of a note to it. That means that the string is clearing the fret, then getting pressed against the fret and generating a note. That means there's enough clearance for me. Again, it's not much. It is, I mean, it's barely moving, really, guys. I like a very straight neck. If you play really hard, you probably need more relief in your neck because if you hit the string harder, the string is vibrating more, which means it needs more of a curvature. That way the string can vibrate and not hit it. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Again, there's kind of this like lightness to the touch that you get when the neck is damn near straight and the nut is nice and low. Now, again, I've not really had to do anything to the nut here because Sir just cuts there so freaking well. A good check that you can do that I learned from John Sir himself. There's a really great video here on YouTube of him on Dave Friedman's podcast where John goes through some of his favorite like setup tips and stuff like that. It's a great video. You should totally watch it. But basically, if you fret at the third fret, you should be able to tap on that string with your other hand and kind of like what I was doing with the straight edge deal. See the string move just a little and hear it. You hear that? If the string was already touching the fret, it wouldn't be making that clinking kind of sound like that. So if you do that and you have to push the string down a lot to get it to make that sound, your nut's too high, it'll affect your intonation and stuff like that. You don't want that. Meanwhile, if the string doesn't move at all and it's just sitting on the fret, probably means your nut's too low and it's probably gonna buzz when you hit open strings and stuff like that. I say that because sometimes I see people with buzzing open strings and they try to adjust their truss rod and stuff like that. If the starting point isn't right, that's not gonna fix it. Oh. But if your guitar does have nut issues, that can be tough. It's not really the kind of thing where you should just grab some sandpaper and go to town. Uh, nut cutting is very difficult to do exactly right. And it's really easy to do very, very badly. So that's one of those areas that does take some finesse. And there's some, some witchcraft and wizardry going on between getting a nut cut really exactly right. But thankfully, I don't have to deal with any of that because Sir does the work for you. I kind of wonder if I could maybe even do with getting that neck a little teeny tiny bit straighter, honestly. But before I worry about that, I'm going to start working on the bridge setup right here because the action still feels a little bit high here in the upper end of the neck, especially on the treble strings. There's absolutely zero buzz or fret out whatsoever because the fret work on this is so good. So I know I'm gonna be able to get it nice and low the way that I like it. But usually whenever I'm adjusting the action, I like to reference another guitar that I have, particularly my like favorite guitar in the world, my uh, Black Sur modern satin. I've used that guitar in like a million videos and it's because it is my favorite guitar in the world. That guitar to me just plays absolutely perfectly. So I like to use it as a reference for my measurements of my action. And when you're adjusting your action, you can go totally by feel as I did for a very, very long time. Or you can buy a nice little action gauge like this. I would recommend getting the, the Stu Mac one. It's a little bit better made and a little bit more logically laid out than this cheapy one I got on like Amazon or something. I think it's called like Baroque or something like that. It works if you're, you know, like me when I bought this and Baroque and got no money in the bank, it's fine. But I find the adjustment gauge and stuff like that to be a little bit confusing, but it'll still get the job done. Y'all have seen this guy. Absolutely lovely guitar, pure perfection. This is my favorite guitar that I've ever owned. Now let's measure around where I like my action. Now some people go from different positions. They go from the 12, they go from the 24, whatever. I generally go from about fret number 17 and I don't really know why because that's the way I've just kind of always done it. Let's see what this thing is sitting at. So what I'm gonna do here is to use the millimeter guide on this card here and I'm gonna lay it right on top of the frets 
a measure here at the 17th fret. Now, I'm putting the card on the fret, right? And I'm measuring the distance from the top of the fret to the bottom side of the string. So here's the fret, here's the underside of the string. I'm measuring that gap, okay? And it looks like here on the high E of my favorite guitar, at fret number 17, that is sitting at 1.25 millimeters, so one and a quarter millimeters. Now the low E side is going to be higher than that. It's a bigger string, it needs more room to vibrate. This guy is sitting more at one and a half millimeters. So 1.25 on the high E side at fret number 17, one and a half on the low E side at fret number 17. Now again, that's pretty dang low, but this is where I like it. I can still feel the string move under my finger when I fret it. I can still get under there for bends and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's not fighting me too terribly hard. So if I measure the action on this one at fret number 17, the high E is actually exactly where I like my low E. It's at 1.5 millimeters, and the low E is about 1.75. So everything needs to come down like a quarter of a millimeter. It's crazy to think that that makes a difference. Because if you saw how much that is, it looks like nothing. But for some reason, under my hands, I can, I can tell the difference. So I'm just gonna lower this down just a little bit. And I'm gonna do that by adjusting the two posts here at the side of the tremolo. Now, with this system right here, the Goto 510 bridge that Sir puts on these guitars, it's a really amazing bridge and it stays in tune super well because of the way that it's made. It might be hard to see here, but there's these steel collars that are actually inserted into the body and then the tremolo posts are screwed into those. That way you're not just screwing posts into wood, which will wear out eventually. But they're not just screwed into those metal jackets. There's also a little teeny tiny set screw in the middle of those that basically goes through the post and to the jacket. That way everything is completely screwed together super solid for better vibration transfer and stability and stuff like that. If you've ever worked on any of the Ibanez Edge or Low Pro Edge tremolos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You gotta insert a little teeny tiny Allen wrench, probably the smallest one that you have, into the center of the post and loosen that set screw before you can turn the post itself. This is very, very important because if you go to try to torque in those posts and stuff while the set screw is still in there, you can pull those steel jackets right out of the guitar and you do not want to do that, especially on a guitar as nice as this one. So be sure to use that teeny tiny Allen wrench and loosen those set screws if you have a locking post bridge like this one right here. I'm not sure what size Allen wrench this is. It's probably like one millimeter or something like that. Put it right down in the middle of the post. I felt it grab the set screw. And now I just lefty loosey that guy to make sure it's not connected to that jacket. Do the same thing down here on the low E side. Loosen that guy, there we go. And you're gonna be ready to adjust those posts. Now one more thing you wanna do before you start turning on these posts here and adjusting your action is to detune the strings a little bit. Reason being is because if the strings are under tension and it's really pulling this bridge up against these two tremolo posts, and then you start to turn in those posts, it's really going to grind them against that knife edge of the tremolo. And if that knife edge of your tremolo isn't sharp, then your guitar is going to go out of tune a lot. So basically you save yourself a lot of wear and tear on your tremolo if you loosen the strings a little bit. That way that bridge isn't just ramming up against the post before you start trying to turn those things while it's under tension. This shouldn't take too much, so I'm going to screw these posts into the body by about a quarter of a turn, retune, and measure where they're at. So here's the Allen wrench going into the post, and I'm just going to turn that a quarter of a turn, just like that. I'll do the same thing here on the bass side. Quarter turn, retune, and now let's measure how much of an adjustment I just made. The high E is now, actually look at that, bang on, 1.25, exactly where I like it. And the low E could probably come up just a little bit actually. It's more like at like 1.45 rather than 1.5 like I like it. So it might be a little too low, we'll just see if it's buzzing or whatever, and if it feels good to play on. <laughs> Yeah, that already feels so soft and silky smooth. Now, one thing I've always got to do is check for any notes that are going to fret out 
under bends and stuff like that because if your fret leveling isn't perfect you're going to get some notes fretting out up high whenever you do bends and stuff so always go through and do this kind of thing just testing like whole step bends every fret and again with this guitar you can hear it's not fretting out at all even under action that low this is one of the reasons why I love Sarah guitars so much. You can set them up however you want to, and they will not fret out. Like, that's so clean sounding. I could go lower. I bet I could go one millimeter on the high E, and it wouldn't fret out. No buzz whatsoever, even under that low of an action. Sir makes things that are nice. Now, you'll notice, too, that this bridge has adjustment screws on the saddles like typical bridges and stuff do. I'm actually not gonna mess with those if I don't need to. From the factory, these have been very carefully radius to match the curvature of the fingerboard of the guitar. So if I went to try to adjust the action by moving these saddles around, I might end up with you know a fretboard curvature that looks like this, and saddles that are like all over the place, you know, up and down, too high, too low, whatever. So whenever I can, I try not to mess with the saddles and just adjust the bridge itself. Yeah, that's totally fine. A little out of tune, but that's not too much buzz on the low strings to me. That feels really nice and comfy, so now we're getting somewhere with this thing. So now that I've got the action where I want it, I'm gonna go back in and reset that set screw and make sure it's locked into that steel jacket. That way it won't move and it'll stay in tune more better. Now it's worth noting that you honestly can't just set up any guitar like this. Super low nut, super straight neck, pretty dang low action and no fret buzz, no fretting out or anything like that. If you try this on your guitar and you find that it's like buzzing and notes are like really, really crapping out or dying whenever you do bends and stuff like that, that's going to involve a little bit more work. That's going to involve like fret leveling and fret dressing and all that kind of stuff to make sure all those frets are exactly the same height and stuff like that. And that is an issue for another day entirely. We're not gonna get into that into this video. So if you set your guitar up exactly like mine and you find that you're having some notes that are you know, buzzing out and stuff like that, you're probably just gonna have to take it to a really respected luthier or guitar tech who can level the frets and stuff and get a better job done on those. Again, that's one of those things, like when you buy a really nice guitar like a Sir, that's part of what you're paying for. World-class fret work that means you can set it up to do anything that you want to. That means you'll do minimal work to the guitar and get it playing like a dream in no time. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do here is to mess with the pickup height. Now pickup height is one of those things that is honestly very different from guitar to guitar and from pickup to pickup and from player to player. What works well for me might not work well for you and the pickups that your guitar has in it. It's one of those things that you honestly just kinda of have to mess around with a little bit and find exactly what you think sounds good. But there are a few things to take into consideration. Different pickups have different powered magnets and stuff inside of them, right? Something like a, like let's say like a Seymour Duncan Invader. That has a really super high power magnet inside of that thing. So if you get it really close to the strings, think about this. The strings are made of metal, right? Whenever you have something that's metal that's vibrating and you put a really strong magnet close to it, what's it do? It pulls it in and it makes it vibrate less because of that magnetic attraction, right? So if you have a pickup with a really strong magnet in it and you park it really close to the strings, it can actually cause problems with your sustain because again, it's gonna be keeping the string from vibrating and also with your intonation as well because it's gonna mess with the way that string moves and everything and again, pull it in, which is gonna change your intonation and stuff. 
I've had guitars that I thought were just broken. They wouldn't intonate right at all. They didn't sound in tune all over the neck. And then I did something as simple as like lower a pickup or two and suddenly the problem cleared up. So this is something you gotta consider. But two constants that you can count on is that you can get the pickup closer to the high strings than the low strings, okay? The high strings are thinner pieces of metal. They move less in that magnetic field. The bass strings, the wound ones, have a lot more metal. They're exciting that magnetic field a lot more. If you keep the pickup totally straight under there, you're gonna have high strings getting drowned out by your low strings. You'll strum a chord and you'll hear just the bass notes and stuff, especially under distortion, and you don't want that. So your pickups are always gonna be closer to the high strings than the low strings, okay? The other thing that you can count on too is that you should not get your neck pickup as close to the strings as your bridge pickup. Hit your string and look at the way it vibrates. It doesn't vibrate that much back here. The string is barely moving. It looks like a hummingbird wing or something. Meanwhile, above this pickup, it's moving a lot. You can see the string moving a lot more. So with that neck pickup, if you put it as close to the, the strings as this pickup is, it's gonna be a whole lot louder than that guy. So it might look weird to look down and look at your pickups and see that the bridge is so much higher than the neck, but trust me, this is the way. This is the way that you wanna do it right here. These are very low output, so I am gonna raise them just a little bit. You know, technically by lowering the bridge, I already brought the strings closer to the pickups. So I'm already hearing a little bit of a change right there, right away than it was when the action was higher. But I think I am gonna turn the screws here and bring them up just a teeny tiny bit for hopefully a little bit more output and bite out of them. Now, as I make this adjustment, I'm gonna fret the 24th fret or whatever the highest fret on the guitar is on the high E string. So I can see that that's not getting too close to the pickup whenever I fret it. I'm just gonna loosen that just a little bit. I'll do the same thing here for the low E. I'm gonna fret it at the highest fret to make sure it's never gonna to touch the top of the pickup because that sounds gross. I'm just gonna raise it up just a little bit. It's not much of a change, but it's probably enough to be heard. Let's do the same thing here on the neck pickup. So I'm gonna fret the high E at 24, raise this guy up just a touch, fret this guy at 24, raise this guy up just a touch, and that's probably going to do. Again, maybe you can see right there, bridge pickup definitely closer than the neck pickup is. Oh. That middle single seems to be in a good spot already, so I'm not really gonna mess with it. It's uh, splitting nicely with the bridge and neck pickup, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. All that stuff I was talking about, about pickup height, you gotta be doubly concerned about that with single coil pickups, y'all. Like, really, really. So, like with a humbucker, the magnet is inside of the pickup, but with a single coil, those pole pieces coming out, those are the pickup magnet. So whenever you look at that thing and you see those pole pieces coming out of your single coil, think about that as being the pickup itself. That's the magnet. So if you get those things really close to the strings, you're definitely gonna be dealing with some of that magnetic pull and dampening of the sustain and stuff like that, like I was saying earlier. So you gotta be really careful with single coil pickups. And especially that neck pickup, park that thing farther away than you think you need to. Because again, you're not looking at the plastic part in relation to the string. You're looking at the metal pole pieces themselves. Those are magnets, okay? You're looking at those in relation to the string, so keep that in mind. Again, I'm really listening there to see if I can get those low strings at the same volume as the high strings. If possible, record yourself doing this in your DAW and listen back to it. It can be really deceptive because if I'm just doing this, I'm hearing the string noise coming off of the deck and coming out of the amp, so it can be really deceptive. You might think it sounds perfect because you're literally hearing the strings acoustically, you know? So it's always worth it to record yourself and listen back totally objectively and see if you can hear the low strings as well as the high strings. Let's try that out. Let's listen back. Yeah, that sounds good. 
Again, that's nice and balanced. I can hear the low strings very well. They're fat sounding. The high strings sound really clear without being like super strident or like ice picky, you know? It doesn't sound like the strings are touching the tops of the pole pieces or anything obnoxious like that. That sounds pretty dang good to me. So we started off by putting the right gauge strings on here. The nut didn't need any work at all because it's an amazing guitar. We got the neck where we wanted it. We adjusted the bridge here so that the action was sitting where we wanted it up high. Uh, we adjusted the pickups and stuff. And now the last thing that I want to tweak here is the intonation of the guitar, because what good is it if it's not in tune all over the neck, right? A lot of players have their own methods for doing this and setting their intonation and everything. John Sir himself says that he really likes to fret a note actually, like the third fret on the low E string here, the G note, and then compare that to the note an octave higher and get those in tune with each other. Myself, I just go the traditional route and compare the open string to the 12th fret and try to get them in tune with each other as close as I can by adjusting the uh, saddles and stuff here with these screws that are at the back of the bridge. Now this guitar out of the box was intonated perfectly for those 10 gauge strings, but now that we've put the nines on there, we've changed the neck straightness and stuff like that, it needs a few small tweaks. It's not much, but just a little bit here and there to sweeten things up. So let's get that open high E super in tune. I'm gonna be using the tuner here on the, on the fractal. Now let's compare that to the 12th fret. 12th fret is just past the middle line. So it's just barely sharp. Barely, barely, barely sharp. Again, maybe infinitesimally sharp. So that guy's a little bit past the line. It's a little bit flat, actually. Barely flat. A. Again, also just a little flat. Back when I used to do this by ear, that's what I used to do. I'd hit the 12th fret harmonic, and then quickly fret it on the 12, and try to hear if I could hear the note going sharp or flat, or just staying right in tune. I could hear that going flat right there. Again, also just a little bit flat. So a couple of these are gonna need some adjustment. It'll just take a second. So before you go to turning these screws, just like what I said with the bridge post, it's best to loosen the string a little bit. You're really gonna abuse a set of strings whenever you're setting up a guitar, but it's okay, strings are cheap. So uh, loosen the string and then we're going to turn this little screw here at the back to move the saddle forwards or backwards. And what I want you guys to remember is if the fretted note is flat, fretted, flat, forward, okay? If the note is flat, move the saddle forward, forward towards the headstock. If the note is coming up sharp when you fret it, like a few of these were, we're gonna move the saddle back, okay? Flat forward, sharp back, and use the right damn tool for the job. So our high E here is just a little bit sharp. So again, detune just a little bit. And we're gonna turn the screw here so that the saddle moves back. It doesn't take too terribly much. This will just take a quick turn of the screw. We'll retune it and the intonation will be better. Perfect. Needle is like basically not moving. And I can again hear, whenever I do the harmonic versus fretted test like this, I'm not hearing the note dive or go up at all, so that thing is super intonated now. And I'm just gonna repeat that same procedure for the other strings as well. If the fretted note is flat, I'm gonna move the saddle forward. If the fretted note is sharp, I'm gonna move the saddle back on all six of these strings. Then it's gonna play super in tune all over the neck. Now we got a guitar that plays pretty damn well in tune all over the neck. The action and stuff is feeling great and I am quite satisfied. Now here's the thing. This is a new guitar and I don't know it. So again, some necks take a while to adjust, some adjust instantly. And I've made this mistake before. I'll go totally nuts about a guitar setup. I love it. I'll put it on the rack. I'll wake up the next morning, go to play it and suddenly the neck is like front bowed as hell and everything's buzzing and my perfect setup is a goner and my heart gets broken or whatever. 
So whenever you do one of these setups and stuff, check it again the day after. I'm not even gonna bother putting the tremolo cover back on this guitar yet, because tomorrow I might find out that this is one of those necks that takes a little while to adjust. Uh, typically, Sir uses like really well dried woods and stuff like that, so they don't usually do that. But hey, this is a new guy. I don't know this guy. Maybe I pick it up tomorrow and the neck is just touching the frets all the way over the middle portion of the neck. I don't know. I'll find out. But for right now, it feels absolutely fantastic. <laughs> And I know a lot of people might think that this seems like a lot of work to go through to get a guitar playing the way you want it to. And some people think a guitar should play exactly the way you'd like it right out of the case whenever you buy it. But that's just not really how it is. Every guitar player likes their stuff set up a little bit differently. So most of the time guitar manufacturers ship their guitars with a fairly neutral setup. That way if you pick it up at a shop, you're like, oh yeah, this feels pretty good. I could probably get it playing the way that I want it to after I get it home or whatever. This is all part of me bonding with an instrument. And really, it just takes an evening. This is the kind of thing that I, I put on a movie and I hook up a tuner and stuff like that and I just make all these tweaks and adjustments and stuff while I'm watching like, you know, Michael Myers like kill a bunch of teenagers or something like that. This is my idea of a good night at home. But your mileage may vary and if that's the case, then take your guitar to a trusted tech and have them do the work for you. They need to make a living too. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna be really scared to do stuff like adjust your tremolo and adjust your truss rod and stuff like that. I used to be as well. I used to be terrified about messing with anything on my precious guitars. But one time a guy on a forum gave me one of the most important pieces of advices that I've ever gotten when it comes to working on your guitars. Anything that you can do to a guitar, almost anything can be undone. If you turn the screw too far, turn it back. If you tighten the truss rod too much, loosen it. It's honestly that simple, with very few exceptions. Again, if you go nuts on that truss rod and turn that thing like a whole turn or something like that, you're gonna have a bad time. Take it slow with that thing. Don't do anything crazy and you're gonna be all right. The only thing you really gotta watch for is stuff with like those set screws like I was talking about with this bridge, because like I said, if you don't loosen those and you try to yank those posts around, you will pull the inserts out of the body. That's permanent damage. You don't wanna mess around with that stuff. So be sure to check for any like locking screws or anything like that on your guitar before you go to turning screws and all that jazz all willy nilly. Hopefully it gives you guys some insights into adjusting your new guitar and making it into the player of your dreams. This thing is making me so very, very happy right now now that I've got it dialed into the way that I like it. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, all that kind of jazz. And let me know in the comments what other kind of videos you guys would like to see concerning tech stuff. I know we didn't cover any like fret work or anything like that. I plan on doing videos about like spot leveling and fret leveling and all that jazz in the future. So let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in learning about soon. If you like this video and want to say thanks, be sure to support my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Or even for just a dollar a month, you get access to a ton of backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more. And if you want a guitar that's going to be super easy to set up, like the easiest playing guitar that you've ever felt in your life, go buy a Sir. Seriously, I know that they're not cheap, but come on y'all, buy nice or buy twice. I've spent a lot of my life buying cheap guitar after cheap guitar, hoping that it would be good, and then selling them, regretting my purchase, losing money in the deal, whatever. When in reality, if I would have just like saved up enough money to buy like one nice guitar, I wouldn't have had to go through like seven cheapies to try to get what I want. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Now go grab that toolbox and get to work on setting up that guitar the way you want it. Let's click it. More picking. <laughs>